Hello, friends. Welcome to the session. Uh, I think this is session six, if I'm not mistaken. And we are talking about network modeling uh, problems, uh, which is part of uh, data optimization or prescriptive analytics. And we are talking about a specific set of problems, which are called as transportation-related problems. Uh, without wasting further time, let's get into this specific use case and let us understand further. And uh, even before we proceed further, I wish to quickly show you this once again. And I wish to quickly bring your attention to these things. Whenever you have a business problem, you first need to understand what are the decision variables going to be. You need to understand what will be the objective function and you need to understand the constraints. We are talking about network models within which we are talking about transportation problems. And there are a bunch of other problems. Let's see how many we can, you know, uh, positively discuss. So here, there is a specific customer uh, for whom we are doing a project. And the customer is RoboSilicon. RoboSilicon is a company which manufactures sand. Okay, and they have a lot of crushing plants in which they crush the rocks and from that ultimately you get sand. They have three units, gear one, gear two, L1, you know, th these are three different locations. And they have a lot of um, amazing customers and a few of the notable customers, you know, I have mentioned here, Raja Pushpa, Lansom, My Home, Ramki. It's an Indian based company which is doing extremely well. Okay, and uh, here we have the total demand. How many tons of sand each of the, you know, customers need, each of the construction sites need? I think there shouldn't be any number here. Okay. And then, uh, this is the price, okay, this is the cost in tens of millions of rupees. Unit cost means for transporting each ton of sand from this uh, source to this destination would cost you so much. Okay. And um, supply from these three plants happens to be 50 tons, 60 tons, and 50 tons. When you sum it up, you get a cost of 160 tons of uh, sand would be needed. Uh, this is the supply that you have. However, when you look at the demand, demand is approximately 210. So in this scenario, total demand is greater than total supply. So it is not a balanced problem. If it is not a balanced problem, you'll have to balance it out. And how would you balance it out? By adding a dummy uh, source. Okay, and 210 minus 160 will be 50. So that would be our dummy source. Okay, so this is what, uh, this is the kind of data that we have. Okay. And now, uh, when it comes to demand, there are two things here, which uh, one needs to understand. We have one, which is called as the minimum demand. Another is the expected demand. Okay, there are two things. Let me write down both of those. So I've quickly tried to make the modifications. We have the minimum demand and we have the requested demand. Okay. Raju Pushpa expects minimum 30 tons, but the maximum that they need or the requested is 50. In that way, you have the details provided. Here, minimum and the uh, expected demand is the same. Your minimum is zero, expected is 30, minimum is 10, max is uh, 60. Okay, 
usually maximum is what people usually consider. Since the total uh, demand is not equal to total supply, you're adding a dummy supply. And do you know what? It's not your regular dummy variable creation wherein you just put all zeros. It doesn't work that way. So what is it that you're expected to do? You're expected to do a slightly different job out here. And uh, that is, uh, let's take example of RAM key. RAM key needs minimum 10. So minimum should absolutely come from the actual supply points. But this is a fixture supply point. Okay, which one? Um, this dummy is a fixture supply point, right? If you don't want this dummy to supply, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, sand here because we need minimum 10, maximum need is 60. Given this context, minimum 10 has to come from the real sources and remaining 50 can come from fictitious source. So you need to put a price here. If you, if you put a price of say very minimal price, then the remaining 50, because 10 should come from the main source, the real source, and the remaining 50 can come from this dummy variable, a fictitious source. Here also, you can put a zero because you don't really want anything from real source. Uh, zero is the minimum expected. The 30, which is maximum expected, can come from dummy. That's fine because anyways, you're not bothered about that. Whereas when you look at Lansom, 70 units should come from real source only. And that's a maximum expected is also 70. So minimum is 70. That has to come from real source only. So for dummy, if you say that the price of transporting is extremely high, then people will really not, uh, I mean, your algorithm will really not consider the fictitious data fictitious source to supply the fan. And when you look at Rajapushpa, which is another customer, 30 should come from real source. And another 20, because, uh, you know, 50 is the maximum that is expected. Another 20 can come from fictitious source. So you put a lower price here. Okay, so here, what you can actually do is for Rajapushpa, you can divide this as real component and extra component that you need. Minimum expected and the extra expected. Because remaining things are pretty clear. So if you look at this, we are taking 30 and uh, we are taking this, you know, the maximum demand. And we are uh, dividing this as 30 and 20 because for Rajapushpa, total is 50. But, I mean, the, the maximum expected is 50. Out of that, minimum is 30, which has to come from real source. So you're putting 30 and you're saying the minimum required. And extra, whatever is extra, is 20. From 50, if you take out 30 from real source, another 20, can come from fictitious source from your dummy variable. So you're putting the price as zero. If you put the price as zero, since the cost of transporting is minimal, it will choose that. So dummy would be select, uh, I mean chosen to supply uh, 20 tons of sand to Rajapushpa extra. Here you're putting a very high price. Here also you're putting a very high price in comparison to the price which is already provided. To give a very high price, this would not be considered. So for these 30, the high price, since it is high price, um, these 30 will not come from dummy. It will come from the real sources, gate 1, 2, or L1. And here also we are doing the same thing. 70 is the maximum. That also happens to be the minimum that is expected. So you are putting the price as... Uh, so not from dummy, 
you want everything to be sourced from real source. For my home and RAM key, um, the minimum is zero, maximum is 30. So you're putting the price as zero. And uh, here also you're putting the price as zero so that, uh, you know, from the six years to the remaining 50 uh, is sourced. Right now, the question that uh, we have is, we have uh, destination, which is actually the construction site. I would convert this as. Mm -mm. destination construction site yeah now now it's clear so now we have uh, the decision variables which we need to select decision variable is how many um, tons of sand are you going to transport from each source or your construction or your crushing station to your uh, destination, which is your construction site. So that's your uh, decision. We, I mean, those are your decision variables. Number two, you need to come up with your objective function. Your objective function is to minimize the cost. So number of units or number of tons of sand that you're going to transport multiplied by the transportation cost which is in tens of millions. So we are multiplying it with 10 million. So do a sum product of these two, multiply it with uh, 10 million so that you get the rupees. This is in rupees, so I can actually remove the dollars which I've mentioned here. Uh, units can be ignored. Yeah, you can just ignore the unit or you can actually go format the cell and change that uh, dollar to a generic number, okay? Or you can also select rupee if you want to, Indian rupees, right? And then the third thing is constraints. Constraints are that all the supply or, or all these demands should be equivalent to the demand of um, Raja Pushpa and Lansom, My Home, Ramke, etc. And all these supply units should be equivalent to the total supply units. So, given this, what we need to do now is just go to data. Okay, put the setting by going to solver. This is what you want to maximize, or, or rather, you want to minimize this, right? Because it's the total transportation cost. And usually the transportation cost should be minimized. So I'll minimize this. This is not maximization problem. Next, we need to change the variables. What variables do we need to change? These variables. We need to change. And then we need to give the constraints. What are the constraints? Let me add the constraints. Whatever values you have here should be exactly equal to your constraints. Yeah, let me add this first. Another uh, constraint is whatever values you have here should be equivalent to these values. Let me click on it. Okay, then non-negative, uh, you can, whatever are the unconstrained variables, you can make them non-negative, meaning number of units, number of tons of sand you want to transport from each of your construct, uh, each of your crushing stations to the construction sites cannot be negative. It can be zero. And now when you click on solve, click on OK, you get to see this. So this is how you need to transport the fan from your construction sites. Uh, sorry, from your crushing sites to your construction sites. And this is the overall cost that you're going to incur. 
thank you so much. Hope you have uh, enjoyed this. Uh, with this, I'm going to stop. And we are certainly going to connect again later. And uh, we will discuss about further business problems. Thank you all. Take care.